It's uh, AFA Today on AFR Talk. And again, uh, we're interested in hearing from you. If AFA has meant something in your life, like that story you just heard, please dial 877-876-8893 and tell us that story. 877-876-8893. We're talking about this huge, huge win uh, for the state of Texas in the Fifth Circuit uh, uh, Court of Appeals. Uh, they overrode the uh, state judge that had said, oh, well, you're not allowing women to get abortions. It's going to be bad. And uh, uh, the Fifth Circuit said, you know what? There's nothing unconstitutional about this. You have uh, voters of a state uh, desiring to see women protected by only being carved into by men that aren't medical flunkies. They actually have admitting privileges to hospitals. In other words, they're real doctors. I saw something on the Internet over the weekend kind of interesting. Um, uh, there's a group now wanting to uh, make a movie about Kermit Gosnell. You remember that story, the uh, horrific uh, abortion butcher in, in Philadelphia who several women died and uh, his, his, um, his place was just put under you know intense scrutiny and then they arrested him and, and so forth. Um, he's in jail now, hopefully for good, like until, you know, like, 2017 years from now or something like that. Um, But what was interesting about this is that uh, they're claiming that there's nobody interested in making the the real-life movie about what happened there. The Jody Arias trial, they had five different studios competing for that. Uh, The Gosnell story, far more damaging to society, far more damaging to the culture. And if you're in media and you believe in race baiting and all these other things, uh, far more damaging to the African-American community and the immigrant communities that he he served about 95 percent of his abortions, too. But you can't get a studio to uh, to to be interested in that particular story. Well, here, here's the interesting thing um, about this. Uh, you've got uh, you've got coming up in the um, in the days to come a group of independent people that are crowdfunding this. That means that they're raising all the money independently uh, to put it in there. And then they're going to make this story that's kind of unvarnished, untouched by any outside sources. And I was listening to an interview with one of the uh, uh, people that are working on it, and they said all you have to have is the court transcripts to see. uh, There's nothing that has to be embellished here. The story is going to be powerful. Difficult Difficult to sit through, no doubt, but powerful. And they said there's actually a couple of good stories uh, that will come out of it as well. Uh, okay, so we're talking about this win. Texas gets to keep its law in place, meaning if you're a doctor and you don't have hospital privileges, you can't cut a woman open for an abortive procedure. Uh, they, they get to keep this law in place that says uh, uh, you, can't, you can't do these things in non-sanitized uh, surgical places. How is that bad for women? Also, how's the law bad for women when women were the main ones that wrote it, advocated it, sponsored it, pushed it, uh, and then went from there to uh, deciding that they were going to uh, defend it when it went to court? You got a lot of feminist groups out there going, oh, this is, this is terrible for women. Are you ignoring all the women that are in favor of it? Oh, and lastly, if you're so pro-woman, why aren't you addressing the fact that 90-plus percent of the abortions that come come at the behest of the pressure of, the uh, the forced nature from a man that is in that life, whether it's a boyfriend, a husband, uh, an extramarital lover, a, a relative, but someone is embarrassed or doesn't want to be. But it's always it's always it's always that man pushing the woman to make the decision in favor of the abortion. Why is that? Eight 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 five eight nine eight eight four zero. Let's go to. Um, I'm going to go to Cindy in North Carolina next. Hi, Cindy. Welcome. You're on with uh, Kevin McCullough. So glad you're here. Hi, Kevin. I just want to thank you for everything you do. I'm an avid listener to you every day. Thank you. And I am a woman who's had an abortion. And one of the Mm. things that's rarely mentioned is, well, it's talked about, I just don't think it's talked about enough, is the mental anguish that you have to live with for the rest of your life. For the first few years that went by, it was kind of out of sight and out of mind, and I was not a saved person. And I didn't have the um, support from the Father, but I've since become saved, and I realize what a horrible thing that I did, and I can never get my baby back. And that's just one thing that I think 
women need to educate themselves on or be educated on before they choose to have an abortion. Cindy, was it true in your case that uh, that the baby's father uh, pressured you into uh, that procedure? At that time, I can't put all the blame on him. It was kind of a mutual decision. Uh, we just didn't feel like we had the finances to support a baby. Um, we but he was young. certainly vocal in in support in, in in the idea. He did not speak up and try to stop me. I mean, that was never an issue. And I, I questioned it up until the minute that, that it happened. I mm. questioned it. I, and had someone, if I'd have been able to see an ultrasound picture, I think, I think the outcome would have been different. Mm. I just wish one person at the abortion clinic would have said to me, honey, please don't do this. If there would have been a protester outside or someone just willing to counsel me a little bit rather than just take my money, I think that I may have turned back if I could have had support from just one person. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry that nobody was there for you, but I will say this. We've learned some lessons from uh, this issue for the last several years, and there are lots of good groups doing that now. So as you're able to to minister to people that are in similar situations, just remember, just keep putting yourself in that in that position the day that you went in and remember how vital it, it was for someone to to just tell you the truth. And I see that's I don't think we ever have anything to go wrong with in telling in, in being truth tellers. And I think if we did did that more often, we might save more lives. Right. And you can find forgiveness at the cross. I understand that. And I've asked I've begged for forgiveness. But I, I don't feel worthy of forgiveness because of what I did. There are a lot of people that feel that way, Cindy. The nice thing about Jesus is that he has forgiven you whether you feel it or not. And when, when you came to Jesus, he, he made you new completely. There was, a, uh, there, was a, there was an old Cindy that didn't trust and follow who Jesus was. There was a new Cindy that the moment you put your faith and trust in him, he imparted to you and then sent the Holy Spirit to, to help guide you. And today, you are not the old person anymore. You are the new person. That doesn't mean everything will be, you know, instantaneously freed of memories or other things. As we talked about last week with World Vision, there's, there's consequences that roll forward in life from decisions that we make. But fundamentally, I think what Jesus is calling you to do now is to use the experience you've been through to encourage others, like, like you're doing by just being even on this radio show, to encourage others to um, deeply consider what they're doing and to go the other direction. If they know, if they know the truth, they will likely go in the other direction, obliterate that confusion for them, amplify the truth, and then help them find what the clear answer is. And I think you can do that. I'm sure trying. <laughs> Cindy, I appreciate your call. Thanks for calling. Uh, 888-589-8840. Let's go to Amber in Missouri. Hi, Amber. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Cindy, I appreciate your call. Uh, Amber, are you there? She'll catch up here in a second. She's just listening to the radio. Hey, Amber, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? I can. Thanks for being patient. Awesome. Um, first off, I'd like to touch a couple of subjects. Um, one, I'm, I'm 21, and I'm a mother of two. Hmm. I, I know I'm the young generation, but I think that it's our generation that's being called to you know, speak up and speak out, because as a woman, I don't feel like I'm any less than a man. M- me and my husband, I feel like we have, you know, we play our roles, and that's how it is. So sure. as far as the abortion topic goes, I don't feel like it's a woman's choice. It's more of a human rights choice. And I, I'm an avid group. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm in an avid group as far as pro, pro-life. And I am, I'm also a group of mothers in, from Canada that I speak with on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, mm. we get on this topic a lot, and it's very touchy up there, it seems, that um, we had a woman that came to us and was saying that, you know, she was considering an abortion. And everybody threw in their two cents about how, oh, it's your choice, and that, you know, you'll be fine, you can do it, you know, this and that. Well, I did a survey on those same women, and, you know, they all said that a baby's a baby from conception, but they didn't feel that you were murdering a baby if you aborted it. And I, I think that seems to <laughs> be the problem. How do they arrive? But, uh, Amber, it's so important. How do they arrive at that conclusion? I mean, the thing that I talk about on this show every day, we're going to obliterate confusion, okay? Those two statements put back-to-back couldn't be more confusing. Exactly. And I, th- and I see, and I approached that because it was a two different, it was in the same week, you know, so it was still fresh on the topic of, well, it's okay to abort your baby if you don't want it. 
But then, you know, I turned around and asked the same subject, well, when's a baby actually a baby to these same women, you know, just to get their input? And they turn around and say, well, from conception, you know, the minute the, the egg implants, you know, that's, that's when it happens. Right. And I turned around and asked the same question, well, why do you feel it's okay to kill that same baby? Is it not a baby just because the mother doesn't want it or because the dad says, oh, I don't want to be a dad? I, don't, I think that's where the moral issue is, is people don't step up and want to be parents when they make the problem. You know, they, they create this so-called problem as a child, but they don't want to, they justify that by saying, well, it's not a baby unless I want it to be. And well, and our culture goes problem. a long way. Our culture goes a long way to telling them that they should embrace that selfishness. They tell them that you're not ready. You're not going to find yourself. You're not going to achieve what you could achieve. You'll always regret it. These are all phrases that are used uh, in that scenario again and again and again. And look, there's no there's no uh, purely uh, uh, non uh, interested party in this discussion either because Planned Parenthood this is this is a billion dollar a year business for them. I mean, they get oh, uh, they get loads and loads of money, and not just from the abortions walking through the door, but also from the federal government giving them a half billion dollars in aid every year. I mean, this is this is a huge boondoggle from them for them. So it's it's one of those things where nobody has pure motives. The 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 man pushing the woman to get the abortion doesn't. The woman nine times out of ten strained in her own heart, stressed over knowing. I mean, you just heard Cindy say. She and, and, and the baby's father came to the mutual decision, and she still had doubts up to the very minute they put her under. I mean, wh- why should a woman have to go through a procedure that she has doubts about at all? I mean, that's, that's the thing. If you're really pro-woman, and thanks for the call, Amber, great stuff. Man, you guys are binge thinkers in, uh, to the extreme. I, I so appreciate it. Um, you, you're obliterating the confusion, amplifying truth, and pursuing clarity. What good stuff. But but as Cindy said, I, I I had doubts right up to the moment that they did it. Do you think that if if the um, if if the pro feminist view of modern feminism was out there and the, and they heard something similar say about uh, a woman ha- having any doubts that she should go ahead with it? No, they would say no. You take all the time you need. You need you make sure you know you 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 have total peace. If it was if it was shoe on the other foot, they wouldn't they wouldn't. Wait two seconds telling that woman to wait. Here it's almost as though, oh my goodness, we can't let her talk to anybody because as soon as she does, she might change her mind. We can't let her do that because a bunch of people would, would miss out. The, the Planned Parenthood will miss out on the dollars and the politicians won't get Planned Parenthood contributions. And then, you know, we, we might actually have to start talking about morality at some point and maybe not having sex before we're married or uh, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there's so many people motivated to not let that woman make an informed choice. It's the least feminist thing that can be done. Pushing a woman towards an abortion is the least feminist thing that can be done for that woman. 888-589-8840. Your thoughts as we talk to you. Michelle is in Missouri. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Welcome. Glad you're with us. What's your thought? My thought is, um... Hello, how are you doing? My thought is uh, the radio station is. I'm, I'm sorry, about. Michelle. We're having a problem. Let's uh, go to uh, Diana in Alabama. Hi, Diana. Hey. Um, thank you for bringing up this issue, and I just want to blurb a group that's doing great work on campus, sure. off campus. www.feministforlife.org. There you go. There are great resources available, and uh, Sarah Foster is the president. You probably know of this group, and they. Advertise the fact that the original feminists who fought so hard thought that abortion was the worst crime. That's the thing they never say. Women. That's the thing. That is so right. The the mm-hmm. suffragettes in the 1920s Absolutely. they were against abortion. They thought it. They thought it was a a, a way to um, abuse women. They thought it was a very uh, taking advantage of type of thing uh, against women. And at the end of the day. Uh, they were against it. And you never hear the National Organization for Women say that. You never hear Gloria Allred saying that these days. You never hear any of these people that put forward this claptrap about, you know, uh, women not being uh, fully who they are supposed to be unless they've killed their child. You never hear them talk about that. Yes, and those groups very much dislike Feminists for Life. Um, they are active on campus to help see to it that there are opportunities for help for young ladies so that they don't suffer the unpleasant consequences and they can keep their children. And I personally have always wondered how anyone thinks it can raise a woman's self-esteem to tell her that her own DNA 
alive is trash. Yeah. Explain that. Diana, you're so you're so clear thinking on this. I'm I'm guessing you're probably involved in the issue on your local uh, home front there. Yeah, definitely. But please, um, please give some publication. Feministforlife dot org. Yeah, www dot uh, feministforlife dot org. They've got great. We'll even resources. put that up on the Facebook page before we're done. Diana, thank you for uh, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Can we try Michelle again one more time? Michelle, is your phone working now? Yeah, I have to go to my window because I'm you know I don't. No problem. What's your thought? Frequency, but um. I did have an abortion a few years ago, mm. and um, I know I don't, you know, believe in it, and I hate it every day that I did it, but um, the fact of what I did was due to, I used to be a drug addict and a really bad alcoholic, but I, I don't do that no more, and I ended up with hepatitis C. Mm. And I did not want that baby to live on this earth with heart complications because it's the baby's heart was already enlarged, and it would have lived a very struggled life. Yeah, and, and Michelle, I thank you for your call. Unfortunately, um, who knows what uh, could have uh, what what that baby could have uh, experienced otherwise? I mean, I hear that a lot. I, I don't want the baby to suffer. I think the baby would rather suffer than die, at least initially. I could be wrong. We'll talk about it again sometime, I'm sure. Kevin McCullough is my name. Thank you for starting your week off right. If you'd like to join the prayer effort, pray2014.com. I'm Kevin McCullough. We'll see you tomorrow.